We have done the best overall games as of the end of 2022 for the Nintendo Switch. But what about the releases of the year before Engage and Tears of the Kingdom? That is exactly what we'll do in this video, so be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell, as we are going for 2022 likes or more to bring you our best picks of the year. Though we have one rule for the numbered entries, we must have beaten the game as how else will we judge it? Anyway, let's get into number 10, Pokemon Legends Arceus. A game from Game Freak that was pretty much finished performance-wise at launch, unlike a certain other game. Yes, it looks terrible compared to other games on this list, has bad pop-in and lacks multiplayer, but we are starting with the origin game story of the Pokeball for how well it contrasts the disappointing Gen 4 remix from 2021 and stands above Scarlet and Violet despite Gen 9's seamless open world due to its better gameplay and overall performance at the end of 2022. A title which started 2022 for the Nintendo Switch with a bang, as the story and gameplay of this game beats nearly every other past and current Pokemon game to a pop. All the ancestor characters found in this game blend in so seamlessly and you can see how much effort it takes to provide a worthy game. The earliest in the timeline to conclude the massive 25th anniversary celebrations of the Pokemon franchise. This game has to be experienced mainly for its active action gameplay as a playable character within the open zone and incredible post game. The best one in the series since probably Gen 2 and includes so many legendaries and origin Pokemon that we simply refuse to spoil here. Now before we move over to number 9, quickly about why Bayonetta 3 isn't on this list, or more specifically, the problems it caused us when we tried to play it. Back in 2018, we made a game versus game where Bayonetta 2 beat Bayonetta 1, but that review was made by Joseph Ferris. Unlike me, Conrad Vanek, he does not suffer from sensory overload. And when it hit us during the opening chapter of Bayonetta 3, we knew we couldn't review the game. If not for this, it would probably have knocked out Pokemon Legends Arceus. So let's get over to our current number 9, namely Fire Emblem Warriors Three Hopes, a game which we didn't review and which we regret, as we didn't have the time waiting for a June Direct which ended up as a third party partner showcase. If we had known in advance, we would have reviewed it, as this is the ultimate Fire Emblem experience for those who don't enjoy turn-based combat. Probably the best Warriors game to date which easily beats Hyrule Warriors, Age of Calamity and even Persona 5 Strikers. A game that fits the Warriors series and the world of three houses perfectly. With the same great story and twists, but also a completely new path where the war in Fodlan is completely different from what we experienced in 2019's longest brand new Nintendo Switch game. Three Hopes blends the mechanics of Warriors and Fire Emblem perfectly and serves as the perfect holdover title before the reveal and release of the successor to Three Houses, Fire Emblem Engage. But now over to something quite different. Number 8. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge Beat'em Up's Golden Age might have been in the Super Nintendo and Genesis generation of the first half of the 90s. But with TMNT Shredder's Revenge there is no doubt that the genre is still alive and well. This was the best Nintendo Switch game of a June that was jam-packed with games and presentations and now celebrating 300,000 subscribers 3 days before my 30th birthday. Either way, the selection of playable characters, gameplay, story, art style and more made this the best Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video game of all time. And it was about time that a title dethroned SNES's Turtles in Time. Speaking of dethroning in a month packed with new releases, our number 7, Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope a review that sadly YouTube removed due to my VPN switching when uploading in Croatia. But yes, this game totally deserved the 88 out of 100 rating we gave it. A through and through improvement of a kingdom battle with far superior gameplay, story, character selection and that despite removing Yoshi as a playable character. This was the Mario game of 2022 when we missed out on any mainline release in a year of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, Mario movie trailers and were left underwhelmed by Mario Strikers Battle. On top of that, Mario Plus Rabbids Box of Hope showed us that Ubisoft is still capable of providing excellent experiences, that is when their games are handled correctly. Headed by the lovely David Soliani and with music by the legendary Grant Kirkhope and Yoko Shimamura, a beautiful Europe slash Japan collab in every sense of the word, which shows how great teams from the old world can work together. Number 6. Tunic we didn't get a The Legend of Zelda release in 2022 after Tears of the Kingdom was delayed to May 12, 2023. But Tunic was the perfect replacement for it and the new top-down Zelda game we're still missing on the system. Since a blend of Dark Souls and top-down Zelda turns out to be a match made in heaven. A combination that I was waiting for since playing the demo for the first time at Gamescom 2019. 
And it definitely did not disappoint, though the release came at a time when I was way too busy to make a brutally honest review of it. Get this game if playing instead of Link as a fox is something you have always wanted to do and are missing the oldest form of Zelda. Top down, but evolved for the modern age. That is all that needs to be said, though be aware that this is a challenging game, far more so than Link's Awakening on the Nintendo Switch. Number 5, Triangle Strategy, a game that I only played recently and now I can say for certain. This is the by far most overlooked game of 2022 on the Nintendo Switch. In other words, we need to step it up. Triangle Strategy is simply that good and a spiritual successor to Final Fantasy Tactics. The variety of game styles, consequences in your actions, and strategic gameplay is simply near perfection in the Square Enix revival of a genre that we thought was dead. With Octopath Traveler 2 on the way, it is clear that more of us should at least give a chance to the same pixelated triangle strategy which simply captured our hearts this year along with the other titles on this list. Now before we move to number 4 and the podium of this year for our Nintendo Switch Game of the Year, let's go over some honourable mentions of games we haven't had time to play aka our back. Live Alive, Neon White, Neo Automata the Yorker Edition, Portal 1 Plus 2 Switch Edition, and it takes two. Number four, Splatoon 3. We have entered 9 out of 10 territory, and Splatoon 3 got its 90 by delivering the best non-DLC story mode in this series. Non-DLC as Octo Expansion still reigns supreme there. But there's so much more to love about this game, beginning with the effing rocks winning the first pre-release Splatfest for Shiver and us rock fans. Joking aside, having all the weapons from Splatoon 1 and 2 and more stages at launch than ever is awesome. The same goes for improved gameplay and generally expanding on everything Splatoon and Splatoon 2 offered. Add to that an excellent soundtrack to match and you have an instant Nintendo third-person shooter classic. In other words, this was the perfect conclusion to the trilogy which has been surpassing all sales expectations and performing like no other new IP since Animal Crossing. Sadly, the game has some online issues and that along with a few smaller issues keeps it out of the podium where we find… Number 3, Kirby and the Forgotten Land. HAL Laboratory has been on a roll during Kirby's 30th anniversary, but nothing tops the release of one of the best Kirby games to date. As to celebrate the legendary pink puffball, we got the title we were all waiting for. A 3D Kirby game which was good enough for a 9 out of 10 from us and which spread so much positivity with its release. Filled with brilliant stages, powers and most of all, transformations. You can turn into cars, vending machines and so much more. This is not only one of the best Kirby games to date, but also one of the best platformers on the Nintendo Switch period. Packed to the brim with a charm that only HAL Laboratory is able to provide in a brand new installment to the franchise. Add to that a solid post game and you got yourself a Kirby game that will be remembered for a long time. One that fully deserves a spot on this podium and might have even competed for game of the year if it wasn't for two releases. One first and the other third party. So let's begin with number two. Persona 5 Royale, a masterpiece plain and simple which would have been our Nintendo Switch game of the year if it wasn't for the fact that this is originally a game first released in 2016, 2017, depending on who you are asking and whether you are counting Royale or not. No matter what, after 5 years of waiting, we finally got mainline Persona on the Nintendo Switch. And as a solid apology for our patience, it was the Royale version, which is just packed with content and godlike music. A hundred hours or more? Yep, as this is the perfect life sim and turn-based battles JRPG title, but you already knew that. What makes Persona 5 Royale special on the Switch is how good of a port it is, as unlike The Witcher 3 or Skyrim, it doesn't feel like a downgrade at any point, as the art style is as made for the system and the Japanese handheld dominated market. This is simply the realization of the potential of Persona as Joker and the rest of the squad who absolutely adore Nintendo in-game and based on the support Atlas has offered in recent years, it is also clear that they are big fans of Nintendo and that this game on the Switch is a match made in heaven. Persona 5 Royale's gameplay and story is so good that we wish it was a brand new game that we haven't played on PlayStation before. Hence our number one and new Nintendo Switch game of 2022 is none other than Xenoblade Chronicles 3. Monolith Soft does what Nintendo doesn't, delivering a sequel to a mainline game earlier than promised. In fact, this game was the first IP that got a sequel released after a previous brand new installment on the Nintendo Switch. But is it the best Xenoblade Chronicles to date? 
Well, definitely from a mechanical perspective, as the deeply touching story of a group of doomed warriors from opposing sides facing the true enemy with plenty of plot twists is just splendid. We're not joking when we say that this is a story that is up there with the original a serious tone and with characters and voice acting that just screams monolith soft. Numerous quests and most of all side quests that feel far more rewarding than in past titles and combined with a bigger combat party than ever and additional heroes, you have the elements that makes this game stand out from 1 and 2 and well, the rest of the games on this list. Once again, the soundtrack met expectations, and the same goes with the massive scale of the world of Ionis, which is five times the size of Xenoblade Chronicles 2. There are so many reasons to love this game, our highest rated game that we reviewed in 2022. Play it, as it is the game we have all been waiting for this year, minus Zelda, which was pushed to 2023. That is all that needs to be said, but we want to see your top 10 in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, be sure to leave a like, subscribe and press the notification bell to share this video to more people. Last but not least, a big thanks to all of you for watching until the end, and to our patreon.com slash patrons, and in particular our role producer Charles Shush. You rock, and please enjoy one or both of these two awesome videos.